Tonight, while travelers struggle to rebook hot holiday flights, experts say what's happening with Sunwing Airlines in Saskatchewan will have a much bigger ripple effect. Also, actor Alec Baldwin is to be charged with involuntary manslaughter after a fatal shooting on a movie set last year. Plus, how a teen from Ukraine is back playing hockey after fleeing the war, all thanks to a town in Saskatchewan. This is CBC Saskatchewan News. It is Thursday, January 19th, and the CBC Saskatchewan News starts right now. Good evening and thank you for watching. A former educational assistant in Vibank is accused of sexually exploiting two students. Now, RCMP want to know if any other children have been harmed. Daniela Ponticelli has the latest. RCMP say they first heard about inappropriate online conversations last October. Now, 38-year-old Stacy Duke is accused of sexually exploiting and luring two boys. She's also charged with making sexually explicit materials available to them. Duke used to work as an educational assistant in Vibank at a kindergarten to grade 12 school. Police say the victims are students from Prairie Valley School Division, but did not say how old they are. An official with the division tells CBC News it cannot speak to the allegations, but they did confirm Duke no longer works there. They also say supports are being offered to students. Meanwhile, RCMP are concerned there may be more victims, and they're asking anyone with information to contact them. Duke is due in court next month. Daniela Ponticelli, CBC News, Regina. We've seen weeks of travel chaos, and we now know most Sunwing flights won't take off out of Saskatchewan anytime soon, so people here have to look for other options. Sophia Harris has more on the personal impact and the possible repercussions in the airline industry. Lisa Adams Cranville is determined to escape Regina's winter by taking her family on a trip to Cuba. But there's a problem. Following the travel chaos over the holidays, Sunwing cancelled the family's initial flight to Cuba, scheduled for earlier this month. The leisure carrier also cancelled most flights from Regina and many from Saskatoon for the rest of the winter, citing business constraints. It's just unfair that, you know, because Saskatchewan is the smallest um, I, I guess maybe we don't do enough business for them. The cancellations mean no direct flights from Regina to Cuba. So instead, Adams Cranville booked a Sunwing flight from Winnipeg. Her family will have to drive nearly 600 kilometers to board the plane. Upset, definitely. Um, it'll be my husband driving, <laughs> not me. Um, but it's just, it's an additional day that we have to take off work. Sunwing has also canceled Sun Destination flights from other smaller cities, including Sudbury and Fredericton. This business professor predicts further air service reductions in smaller regions as airlines look to save money due to rising operating costs. We want a competitive market. He also says if WestJet gets approval to purchase Sunwing, that will raise competition issues, as already noted by the Competition Bureau. They said it's going to reduce competition, it's going to reduce service and increase prices, all the things that are not supposed to happen. Airfares are already soaring, up by 26% in December, compared to pre-pandemic times. Some experts say it's time for Ottawa to consider opening up the Canadian market to foreign competition to help increase service and decrease airfares. We're going to be forced to make that decision. Do we want foreign um Foreign means, of course, American, as we know, mostly American airlines coming in. The federal government says it will continue to ensure there's more competition and more options for air passengers. It didn't say precisely how. We leave on the 27th and anything can happen. As for Adams Cranville, she's excited about her trip, but worried that it too might get cancelled. Sophia Harris, CBC News, Vancouver. An aviation expert says he's not surprised that Sunwing's business has taken a major downturn given its shortage of pilots versus the huge demand for flights. Sunwing was trying to hire temporary foreign pilots, but that plan wasn't approved. So will the company survive? John Graddock says it depends on what happens with a possible WestJet takeover. Canadians are upset, as they rightfully should be upset, with the Sunwing performance. Has that, you know, Sunwing performance affected the brand value? and the market, you know, market value of Sunwing? The answer probably is yes. 
Uh, is it enough of a hit so that you know passengers will not come back to a Sunwing product next winter? I'm not sure. Canadians typically have a short memory, but the Sunwing transaction with the sale to WestJet or a merger with WestJet is the one key element of survival. And uh, hopefully they, they get through that decision fairly quickly. Food prices have increased by about 10% over the past year, and that's expected to keep climbing across Canada. Experts say we could be in store for another 8% increase this year, and that means more people will have to rely on a food bank, many of which buy food in addition to receiving food donations. The rising food costs are connected to the uncertainty with the war in Ukraine, the falling Canadian dollar, and the carbon tax adding to transportation costs. I just don't see changes in those three key factors, certainly until summer. I mean, optimistically, it would be great if one or all three of those um, sort of started to be resolved. But un until we see some indicators of changes in those three factors, I think we should expect higher food prices probably throughout the entire coming year. We actually purchase, uh, and that's been the sort of largest growth in sort of the food that we're coming through is actually our purchasing. So we're, we're purchasing about three to four hundred times more food than we were three years ago uh, just to make up the uh, the difference in sort of the, the need we're seeing. Uh, as, as so, so like I said, a lot of those sources grow, but the one that's really exploding is, is purchased food. Bailey says the biggest challenge is meeting the rising demand at the food bank. While the food bank is able to buy more because of its purchasing process, he says the number of food donations is not keeping up with the rise they're seeing in customers. If you use SaskTel's email service, get ready to pay more for it. Starting in April, SaskTel says email addresses for its customers will no longer be free. Each address will cost $1.95 per month. The Crown Corporation says providing a free email service is no longer justified because there are plenty of other free options. And as of today, SaskTel also stopped providing email addresses to new subscribers. A 14-year-old Ukrainian boy who loves hockey is back playing the game, but now in Saskatchewan. The boy's family fled Ukraine last February after the Russian invasion. The hockey school in Kirinport decided to give him a new home. Bonnie Allen reports. An afternoon off school to take in the simple joy of playing shinny. For number five in blue, it's a new Canadian experience. 14-year-old Misha Shelipov played hockey back home in Ukraine, but he had to give it up when his family fled to Poland to escape the war. It's almost been a year. February 24th, he had a practice in uh, Kharkiv with his team, and uh, they told him better get out of here because the war is about to start. And as they, they drove to their hometown to uh, you know, kind of get away from it, the, the, the bombs started falling. Barrett Krop is the head of the Prairie Hockey Academy attached to a Christian school in Kirinport near Moose Jaw. He used to coach in Europe, though, and an agent there told him about Shelipov. The coach decided to help get the team back on his skates. Krop used Ottawa's fast-track system to get Shelipov and his mom to Saskatchewan. His first question when we picked him up at the airport in, in Regina on December 18th was, Coach, when, when can I go to practice? And, uh, and so he's just, he, he loves, he eats, sleeps and breathes hockey. Shelipov can't believe how much hockey he gets to play. In Canada, we can, we can skate when we want, uh, like uh, we can go to outdoor rink. His first game was in Winnipeg and his team sent him out on the ice first for his rookie lap. Honestly, he's had a smile on his face. He can't, he can't knock the smile off his face. Canada born hockey. Hockey born in Canada. And uh, uh, I like play here because it's uh, harder, it's uh, more body checks. We're grateful to have him on the team. It's just a great experience. Shelipov's dad, two sisters and grandma are still in Poland. The community is trying to bring them here. Until then, he focuses on moments like this. When he's just one of the guys playing the game they love. Bonnie Allen, CBC News. Many of us have been anxiously awaiting the return of sunshine in this province. And though some areas did get a few rays today, most of us are still seeing a lot of gray and white. Our weather specialist Ethan Williams has more on what exactly is happening.
fog and rime ice. We seem to be stuck in that weather pattern these days. So what's causing it? Well, first, our upper atmosphere, which is usually moving, has almost slowed to a complete stop. And systems in our lower atmosphere, which bring snow and wind to mix things up, haven't really been happening either. And that's caused a temperature inversion. When you go up through the atmosphere, from the surface up through the atmosphere, the temperature cools. Uh, but in the case of an inversion, the temperature actually warms up. That creates a cap on our lower atmosphere. Everything gets trapped in there. All the moisture, be it from open um, lakes or open rivers like we have with the South Saskatchewan, um, pollutants get caught. We've got uh, sources of heat and moisture from uh, industries and cars and that type of thing. So that all gets trapped underneath the inversion. When we get fog, when it's cold, the water droplets that form the fog freeze and we get rime ice. It can be a problem if it causes power lines to sag and create outages, but it can also be really beautiful. So if you've taken a photo of the fog or rime ice lately, send it our way. And it was another foggy day in Regina. The only silver lining is that the temperatures really are quite comfortable to be outside. Ethan did promise us that the sun would come out at the end of the week, that is tomorrow. Let's see if that's still what the models say in his forecast after the break. We'll be right back. We've been hearing about a shortage in veterinary services right across the country, including here in Saskatchewan. It's something that the Western College of Veterinary Medicine is working to address. The Dean, Dr. Jillian Muir, joins me now from Saskatoon. Thanks for being here. Thanks very much for having me. Why do you think there is such a strain on this profession right now? Well, uh, there's a strain on the profession because there's um, the causes are a bit different between urban and rural areas, but overall there's there's been a really increased demand for veterinary services um, with growing urban populations, you know, more and more people are owning pets and that's been happening over many years now. But then there was a dramatic increase in pet ownership during the COVID pandemic when many people reached out to uh, purchase or uh, adopt animals to keep them company during isolation. And so there are a lot more people are, are owning pets um, in the cities and in rural areas. Um, I think the, the shortage of veterinarians is really related to long-standing changes in farming and livestock production. You know, farms are getting larger and further apart, and it's harder for veterinarians uh, to work across those lar larger dis distances. And now the overall shortage of veterinarians has really exacerbated this. So, so we've uh, we've we've really, really basically, it's a really increased demand that has led to this the shortage. It's interesting because I did wonder if all those pandemic pets did have an impact. I know you just returned from a veterinary conference in Florida. I'm wondering if the shortage and strain is something that was addressed and discussed while you were there and what you can tell us about it. Sure, it's it's been a hot topic um, across North America because the shortage is is north, certainly North America wide. Um, and um, my my group of, of deans of vet colleges, we got together to to look at how we can, you know, how we can address it um, by increasing our class sizes as much as we can, for example, to to um, graduate more veterinarians. But yes, it's been a hot topic for, for many months now. What are some of the barriers to entry for potential students? For, for students getting into vet school, we um, vet school is a is a challenging a challenging time. There's a lot to learn in vet school in a very short time, so it's a it's a really intense program. So um, one of the barriers that we think about most commonly is the the fact that students do need to um, be fairly strong academically in order to manage the workload. So um, so those those kind of barriers I think would would be the the main one. Um, we do also at the Western College of Veterinary Medicine, uh, we do ask our students to um, to have a lot of experience with animals and to understand, have also worked with veterinarians. So that's usually not a barrier because of course, students who want to be veterinarians, that's, that's easier for them to do. That's why they're doing it because they want to work with animals and people. So what is the college in Saskatoon doing to help bolster the workforce and to keep them working in this province? Yeah, so we're working on a number of fronts at the vet school. Um, We've recently expanded the size of our Doctor of Veterinary Medicine program from 78 to 88 seats. 
Um, we've received increased funding from our provincial partners to do that. Um, we are, as you probably know, we're Saskatchewan's vet school, we're Manitoba's vet school, and we're British Columbia's vet school. And each of those provinces have increased their support for the college. And those new seats are part of a new admissions pool that we've developed, allocated for vet college applicants who have agricultural backgrounds or have shown a commitment to livestock production. So in addition, but with, with this increase, what's happened is we're now at full capacity. We, we are at capacity for our sp teaching spaces, for our hospital, for the number of instructors we have. And so we've just we've launched a feasibility study to do to look at expanding our DVM program so that we can graduate more more veterinarians and and we're working to determine what are the spaces how many more instructors do we need in order to to grow our program. Well, thank you so much for your time, Dr. Muir. Thank you, Dr. Jillian Muir is the dean of the Western College of Veterinary Medicine in Saskatoon. This weather update is brought to you by. Capital Ford Lincoln. The trade and upgrade event is on now. And our weather specialist, Ethan Williams, joins me now. I just want to say foggy, fog, 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 mm -hmm. fog. Where's the sun? Is it coming? Is that a thing? It, it is, yes. And uh, yeah, I, I think my mind is clouding up with the fog as well. It's just like I can't, I can't even seem to focus anymore. We're just caught in this whole <laughs> cloudy, foggy world, as you say. But there is relief on the way. But just how foggy has it been in the province? Well, there is a way to measure that, and we've done a little bit of number crunching here. And this is a look at the hours that we've seen in the province with visibility less than a kilometer through the month of January. So in a place like Kindersley, where it's been very foggy, the 30-year average for the amount of those hours uh, is around 31 hours through the month of January. But so far, you have nearly quadrupled that, spending 122 hours with visibility below a kilometer in Kindersley so far this month. And of course, the month's not over. Yorkton, your 30-year average is around eight and a half hours, and you've more than doubled that in just the first 10 days of the month. So just goes to show you how bad it has been. And there are still fog advisories in effect for portions of the province, including Regina and Moose Jaw, and down toward Weyburn, Estevan, over to Oxbow, uh, Carlisle, and Carnduff regions as well. And yesterday, of course, it was that western side of the province that was dealing with the dense fog, and now it's shifted eastward. Just over half a kilometer of visibility right now around Estevan, and uh, getting dropping down toward that in Regina and Yorkton. Now, of course, this has all been causing rime ice, and the rime ice has unfortunately Unfortunately, been wreaking havoc on some power lines. And SAS Power telling me earlier today that about 2,600 customers in the province earlier today impacted by power outages that happened overnight as a result of that rime ice getting onto the lines. And there are still some sporadic outages as of 6 o'clock. Just south of Kindersley, just southwest to Swift Current, just east of Regina, and just south of Weyburn. No ETR on any of these right now. So uh, just because you're in a red area doesn't mean the entire area is without power. But be prepared to uh, spend the next few hours maybe without power in some parts of the province. Now, everything changes as we go through the night tonight. We have a bit of a flow in our atmosphere. Drier westerly flow is going to knock out the cloud cover, bringing a mostly sunny day for many of us tomorrow, or a mix of sun and cloud in some portions of the province. And that's going to stick around Saturday, save for maybe portions of the north where a little bit of cloud is going to be moving in. And, uh, but it shouldn't be as dense as we've seen over the past couple of days. Temperature is going to remain warm. Skies clear out, and look at this, the winds are going to remain fairly light for us as well over these next two days. So that means we're going to uh, get to enjoy some nice weather, especially on Saturday, as you'll uh, see here in our extended forecast in Regina, where temperatures will be well above normal, lots of sunshine. Those overnight lows, not bad at all. Look at that, minus 6 going overnight Sunday into Monday. A little bit of snow possible on Sunday. Not as much, I don't think, as we were originally thinking at this point. And then the return of the wind. Remember that? It does come back a little bit on Monday before we see uh, some more sunshine on Tuesday. A little bit of cloud cover building in for Wednesday, Thursday with the possibility of flurries and temperatures cooling down somewhat. Saskatoon, well above normal as well. Minus four tomorrow, minus three Saturday. Great next couple of days here with calm conditions for the most part. Fog clearing out. A little bit of flurries with that system on Sunday. And then sunshine, sunshine, sunshine. I hope you're happy, Sam. There's your answer. More sun. I had jazz hands when you were saying it was going to clear out. I so. saw that. I think a lot of people are doing that too. <laughs> Very excited. Thanks, Ethan. You bet. 
I bet these pugs would have jazz hands if they could. A pair of lucky pups from Winnipeg are making the most of winter. Take a look at these pug-sized snow tunnels, custom made for Tino and Sadie. They spend their days and nights racing through the icy maze of forts, complete with a light show. Even the cat doesn't want to miss out on the fun. The owner says he creates a new version of the Canine Winter Wonderland every year. We'll be back after the break. Hollywood star Alec Baldwin is going to be charged with involuntary manslaughter in connection with the fatal shooting on the set of his movie Rust. That announcement came in a release from a district attorney in New Mexico today. Chris Reyes has the story. After a year-long investigation, Santa Fe's district attorney says she's absolutely sure Alec Baldwin fired the gun that killed cinematographer Helena Hutchins on the set of the movie Rust in 2021. He didn't check it. He didn't do any of the things that he was supposed to do to make sure that he was safe or that anyone around him was safe. And then he pointed the gun at Helena Hutchins and he pulled the trigger. Baldwin was rehearsing with a revolver when a live round hit Hutchins and director Joel Souza. Souza was taken to hospital and survived. Baldwin and the movie's armorer, Hannah Gutierrez Reed, are facing two counts each of involuntary manslaughter. Involuntary manslaughter is like making a mistake. It's not intentional, but it's still serious because it's still an act of killing. So what they're saying, the prosecutors are saying is that Alec Baldwin had full control of this weapon. In a statement, Baldwin's lawyer said this decision distorts Helena Hutchins' tragic death and represents a terrible miscarriage of justice. Mr. Baldwin had no reason to believe there was a live bullet in the gun or anywhere on the movie set. We will fight these charges and we will win. I think the producers who were charged with hiring the crew to begin with put very inexperienced people in, in, in the positions that they should have never been in, i.e. the prop master and the armor who had no experience. Rust was only the second movie that 25-year-old Gutierrez Reed worked on as an armorer, the person in charge of all weapons on set. This was a really fast and loose set and that, that nobody was doing their job. There were three people that if they had done their job that day, this tragedy wouldn't have happened. Last year, New Mexico's safety agency fined the film's production company for safety violations on the set. Because the charges involved the use of a gun, Baldwin could face up to five years in jail if convicted. Chris Reyes, CBC News, New York. And Ethan's back with one last look at tonight's weather. And yes, that is blue sky behind me, Sam. We'll get clearing in Regina through the night tonight. See mostly sunny skies, likely by tomorrow morning. We'll get a little bit of cloud cover as we move through the day, but I think the sun is going to stick around. Winds should remain not too bad out of the west, heading for uh, minus 8 by the noon hour. Uh, in Saskatoon, similar thing. We're looking for a mix of sun and cloud. A little cool tomorrow morning. Winds will make that wind chill feel closer to minus 20, warming up to around minus 7. A nice mix of sun and cloud. Take a good long look at this shot, because I think things like these are going to be disappearing pretty soon. Sarah sending this from just east of Asquith, and she says this is her favorite tree because it marks the uh, separation between the vast prairie fields and appears to hold many stories. What a nice uh, little story she's told us, Sam. It looks like a good tree to read a book under. Yes, it does. <laughs> All right, thanks, Ethan. You bet. And that is it for us tonight. For news anytime, you can always head to our website or subscribe to the CBC Saskatchewan YouTube channel. Glenn will be back with more tonight at 11. Thanks for watching and have a great night.